This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're going to be talking about the Crime Prevention Award winners, and we got two of them right here on the sofa. It's going to be awesome. And guess what? The holidays are right around the corner, and MacArthur Center is ready for you. And during those holidays, did you ever wonder what you should put down the drain? Well, we're going to tell you exactly what you should and shouldn't do. So stay right to here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. You are in for a treat, and believe it or not, I'm going to say that because you've got two police officers and Moravia sitting on the sofa. Moravia Reed, who is Community Outreach Coordinator, Norfolk Police Department. I got, I'm going to say it right off the top. Um, Crime Prevention Awards dinner the other night. Awesome. Great winners. But when these two guys won, I knew I was in trouble because it's kind of like Dancing with the Stars. I'm going to have them on the show. Oh, good. Good. Right? Yes, yes. They so were, what a, they are, why they win? Why did they win? Yeah, and then you want to explain who they are, and then the people who are watching know exactly why they won. Okay, they won because of the wonderful things that they do in the communities that they serve. Their nominators talked about how they really help the citizens at the Civic League meetings they attend to learn how to take care of each other and, and be in touch with them and make it a real partnership in Good. terms of the police and the citizens that they serve. Because the reason I wanted to ask you that question to begin with because mm -hmm. you and I, this will be the last chance we'll have to talk. Because the minute I introduce them, we're going to know exactly why it's okay. they won. Officer Miles Warner, Warren. Yes. And officer, ooh. <laughs> and officer Jet Sarmien. Sarmiento. Sarmiento. Present. Okay. You're not going to get serious on me. <laughs> no. The minute I saw you guys at a civic league meeting, and I got to tell you, I, it was a, 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 a fairly tense meeting. But the two of you got up and related to all 150 people in that room and had them eating out of your hand because you were so sincere and not the least bit serious. <laughs> Is that how you approach life? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you've been partners for how long? It seems like life? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. It seems like forever. I know. But how did you come about being partners? I actually asked for him specifically after my former partner left and went to uh, Homeland Security, um, the Harbor Patrol. What would you see in him? Because, I mean, it's, in spite of what you might see on TV, being partners is a pretty serious thing. Yes. Well, we have to be serious sometimes. But it, it, when we go to civic leagues, it's just, it's not cut and dry when you go there. You want to try and make it a little bit festive and put people at ease. Um, we don't want to act like we're speaking you know down to them we want to try to be on the same level that they're on and I think they take the information that we we give them a little bit better that way but you come with authority you got the 35 pound belt and the and the 35 pound stomach to go with it <laughs> it's the best you the best on all the time yes all the time yes okay now you knew you got nominated right yes we did do you know who nominated you I believe it was um, two members of our civic leagues. Okay. Two separate civic leagues. What did it mean when you got nominated to you? I personally did not know what it contained on the letter. I have no idea what it said. Um, do you know? No, I didn't know what the letter said. I, we just know we got nominated. That, that, that's it. And that's all that matters. First of all, we were shocked that we were nominated. And then second of all, when we actually won, I mean, we were just out of control then. Because we were actually ready to walk out of the stage when we heard That's right, because first of all, for those that weren't there, I mean, yeah, right. there's, you, you're called up to the stage. All the which, nominees get up on the stage. Yeah, right. Which I, you know, now in the Academy Awards, they throw, well, we couldn't afford the cameras to show their pictures in the studio. So that's why you had to bring them up on the stage? You know, because in the Academy Awards, they we show We bring them. them on stage and we take their pictures. Gotcha, We've okay. talked about so many different ways to do that, but this is the way that seems to be working best. And in that today. way, you've got all couple of hundred people that can watch the faces of the people that don't get the nominate, don't get the... Well, we have all the nominees together, yeah. and then the winners are selected, and then the winner takes a picture with the chief of police as the other nominees as, um, exit the stage. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And these two guys, ah, shocks, we might as well go back and finish. Yes, they finish were long. getting ready to walk off the stage. Because you hadn't finished Just your cake? I thought before. I was actually going to fall down the stage because Miles was like, get off the stage. We're, we're <laughs> I leaving. Was, I was asking everybody, excuse us, excuse us. We need to get down. Excuse us. And then they called our names and we were like, what? <laughs> so, yeah, we were pretty shocked. 
But that speaks volumes, I think, doesn't it? I mean, they're, they're kind of humble guys. You know, yes, they are. We asked the chief for a recount. <laughs> <laughs> it was an honor. It was an honor winning that it was. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, it is cool. So what, why do you think you want it? It's not one specific thing that we do. It's a combination of all That's the right. things that we do. Mm -hmm. Besides the youth academies, we facilitate the Citizens Police Academy. Um, our, our job as, as community resource officers is besides giving resources to other people that don't know who to call or where to go, um, we also are part of crime prevention. And that's mostly what we do on a daily basis. And it can be going to civic leagues and telling people not to leave uh, GPS is in their car or wallets or loaded guns. Uh, it's going door to door with thousands of flyers, you know, if there's a problem in a particular neighborhood to let the citizens know you have a problem in your neighborhood, you know, you need to take these, these precautions. And each time we do this, when we interact with people, we stand up to our civic leagues and youth academy, no matter how our, bad our day's going, we put a smile on our face because we enjoy our job. We like helping people. I mean, literally, we. I became a police officer. I can't speak for my partner because ever since I was a little kid, I always had that image in my mind of helping that little old lady across the street. It's not so much like that anymore. Right. What we do, we have city cell phones. They can call us 24 hours a day. I've gotten calls 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning from dog feces from the beach to narcotics. And so we answer that. We're very diligent in what we do. And so that's what we do. But you have fun with the people too, right? Yes, Absolutely, we, yes, we have fun we with have the people. A lot of fun. We don't make fun of the people, we have fun with the people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, let's kind of have a serious note on that. I mean, one of the things I'm hearing in my travels around the community now with neighbors building neighborhoods is we're up against this kind of this cultural war, wall about no snitching. That if you call and you tell a police officer about something that's going on in your neighborhood, that, that you're snitching. I mean, how do you get around that? Well, that's what the, uh, Norfolk Cares is for. So people don't know, you can call that 665-6510 number or you can do it online um, or in an email and that way nobody knows, the neighbors don't know who called. Not only that, but when they call us, since they do have our city cell phone, which is kind of like our personal cell phone, they kind of sense that not only we're officers, but they kind of have that friendly relationship with mm -hmm. us and they know they can have that, that trust. I was going to say, it's a trust relationship? It's a trust relationship, correct. Cool. So what do you, what do you have to say to the people who are nominated in your category that didn't get it? I think they've all done a great job in the city. Uh, like I said, it's an honor to win this award, right. but they've, they've done a great thing for the city of Norfolk. It's and, an honor and, just to be nominated. Yeah. Right. And so we're proud to have them in our team. That's right. Everybody's a winner. That's what we always say. What, Maria, let me ask you, because yes. some of the other winners mm -hmm. um, went from uh, a high school student to someone who yes, is no we, longer in high school. Oh, yes. So we had a, Yes, we had a... Um, young man from Booker T. Washington High School who mm -hmm. won the Youth Award, and he's very active in his community fighting crime. And again, he's, he's in a part of the community that it's not necessarily the cool thing to do. Right, right. So he doesn't let peer pressure influence him the wrong way, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Yes. And then all the way to uh, Edith Waring. She's yes, the... she's been around for a while. Uh, she's with the Sheriff's Department, and she was also totally surprised when she was presented the award. Yeah, because she was back there in the back selling raffle tickets. Yes, <laughs> yes. I won the 50-50. <laughs> That's right, you were the winner all the way around. That's right. So, he won what twice. do you have to say for somebody like Edith, though? Because she hasn't quit yet, has she? Uh, no, we, uh, we're very familiar with uh, Miss Waring. We, we deal with her on a regular basis. Too. We have great respect for her. We deal with her in Northside Civic League. I believe she's the mm -hmm. secretary slash treasurer. Mm -hmm. And also she's a member of the Citizens Police Academy right now. Yeah, which, yes. is, a, which is a program you guys are really proud of. Yes, yeah. we, we, very much so. Yes, we're very proud of Citizens Police Academy. And she's been the treasurer for CPAN as well. She is the treasurer. And CPAN for stands for? Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association of okay. Norfolk. Which, and she's going through it again because it's changed so much, right? Yes, she went through it about 10 years ago, but it, it has changed All right. over the years. Well, I want to personally thank you guys for everything that you're doing in the community. And, uh, and really, you got my attention that night that I saw you announcing uh, the, uh, the, the upcoming class and, and caught my attention as to why it should be done. So it's that connectivity with the resident that you all have had that I'm, I'm very excited about. And we were so glad to have you it there. It was my pleasure. It was nice. Hey, my big question, are you guys ready for Christmas yet? <laughs> no, it's right around the corner. 
I have to start buying gifts for him since well, he has a Jewish. So. <laughs> well, I just got a couple of things for him up in New York. I had to go and bring a generator for a friend who still had no power. Ooh, wow. he's very expensive. So, to buy wow, gifts for. he's very yeah. picky. Wow. So well, I got him some stuff in New York. So caring for people, not just here. Mm -hmm. But back in New York, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hey, hang around then, because Karen Winters is coming out to talk about some of the stuff at the mall. So you might get some Neat. holiday <laughs> ideas. Yes. Stay tuned for some more great stuff. Sounds good. A boy born in Joplin, Missouri, was fascinated by anything with wheels and a motor. The odds of him winning both the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year, one in 195 million. The odds of the child being diagnosed with autism, one in 88. I'm Jamie McMurray, and my niece has autism. Learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Welcome back to Nova Perspectives. This is a special segment because we were talking with Karen Winters from MacArthur Center. How's it going? It's going well. And some have said, why would I want to talk about a mall on Norfolk Perspectives? And I said, well, because I get a chance to talk to Karen Winters. But I there's say, a special why relationship. Why wouldn't you want though. to talk about I know a mall? It. Why well, wouldn't you? And there's a special relationship with this mall because this is not just a mall. This is really the beginning of the revitalization of downtown. It's a big part of the city, it's a big part of the community, and now for the holidays, it's really become a big part of people's holiday traditions. Yeah. You know, it's the, um, this is our 13th holiday, which probably means it's the 13th year I've been sitting on this couch talking to you about, to about everything that's happening at the mall. Um, but, you know, it's our eighth season of MacArthur on Ice, so we have people that have, you know, been skating with us for eight years. We've got Santa Claus and the Ice Palace, our fabulous decor inside, and we've got people who come back year after year to get their picture taken with Santa Claus at MacArthur Center. So, you know, in addition to being a big part of the city and a big part of the community, it really is a big part of people's just holiday traditions and, and the things that, that are special to them during this time of year. Well, the thought that just hit me, and you're going to shoot me for saying this, there are probably clerks who are now working at the mall for the first time whose parents worked at the mall. Oh, I, I'm sure there are. When they were little kids. Right? I mean, that's, yeah. you know, 13 years when you think about yeah. a decade plus. So it really, so I guess when our, when our council said it would be the rebirth, they meant really not, also not just in retail. I hope we've lived business. up to that. I think you I have. I think we have, but well, yeah. And, and so here we go. We're going to start the journey through the mall. But number one, there are stores in the mall now, right? We yes, have to establish are. that. Yes, shopping, shopping, shopping. Lots and there are some new restaurants and, and, and stuff there. We have um, Oban Pan, which has opened up recently in the food court, um, which for those people who don't know, you find them a lot in the airports. It's kind of soup, salad, sandwich oh, okay. kinds of things, which has been very well received. We have Panda Express, Firehouse Subs, um, Sakura. So we have a sushi bar and a hibachi grill. A, and the um, ice cream plate. Uh, I've discovered that when you can kind of sneak around Bobalicious. You can yeah. get frozen yogurt with all kinds of yummy toppings. Yep. So yeah, lots of good um, happenings in the food court. And then... We have um, some new stores that have opened up. We have Aerosols. We have Clark's. Um, Lush is under construction, which is organic bath products. People seem to be very excited about that. Um, Sports Zone Elite is under construction. And then Seas Candy and Hickory Farms are back for the holiday season. Those, are, those traditions. are two people's, right, yeah, two, two big favorites. So, so lots of shopping to be done in addition to our winter extravaganza. Okay, well, and that kind of, I mean, so, yeah, you got all the shopping, which is the purpose. Like our two police officers who need to go out shopping real quick. Sure. They go to the mall, it's done, right? Yes. No. Not with MacArthur Center. You want to add another layer, and that's really where it's becoming part of the family traditions. We've added quite a few layers. Ice skating, I think. yeah. Still there. Ice skating, eighth season of MacArthur on Ice. We're up and running, um, and this year, if you haven't driven by or you haven't been already, we added an outdoor winter carnival. What? So we're very excited about that. So it's all outside. Um, in the same area on the corner of Freemason and Monticello. Um, and we actually have Southern Auto as our sponsor this year. So it's the best way to car shop is come do a little ice yeah. skating, ride on the Ferris wheel and walk around and look at some cars. You can do all that while you're out there. Um, the Ferris wheel is a 55 foot LED lit Ferris wheel. Um, we have a big tall slide, it's 20 feet up and you can slide down and then we have lots of really fun rides for the little kids. So we have a little roller coaster, we have the little flying helicopters, the cars, a train that goes around a little holiday village. So it's, it's really fun. 
Oh, really cool. fun. So and that's just, all happening outside. Right there outside. At the corner of Monticello and Freemason. Okay, now I heard rumor that Santa has already found his way to the mall. Oh, Santa is inside at the Ice Palace. Um, this is our third year with the Ice Palace. So for those people who have not visited us in the past, the Ice Palace is our big holiday display. It looks like it's carved from ice. Um, when you walk in, you see the, I'm sorry, I should back up and tell you, our um, partnership this year is with Ice Age 4 Continental Drift. So um, The one with the guys that ride around in The prehistoric pine herds. Cones or whatever. So, yeah. Yes, the acorn. Scrat acorn. and his search for the acorn, yes. So we have the prehistoric herd from Ice Age 4 Continental Drift. So you walk in, and there's um, two big globes that look like they're carved from ice, and you see the scenes from the movie, and there's a video screen that you can watch. Um, there are five acorns hidden through the whole ice palace display. So like Scrat is on the search for the acorns, you too can search for the acorns as you mm -hmm. walk through. There's an ice throne that you can sit on that feels cold to the touch, feels like you're sitting on ice. The whole thing is lit with LED lights, so you'll see purple hues and blue hues. Wow. It's beautiful. And then you walk inside this big 30-foot dome, and it snows. So if we don't get snow outside in Norfolk, you can come to MacArthur Center, and it snows inside. Inside. That's cool. Yes. That's um, cool. And I've been telling people, come early. We get long lines the later into the season that we get. So if you come early, the kids can spend lots of time playing in the snow. We have kids in there making snow angels and having you know, little snowball fights and throwing the snow up in the air. And um, you'll see all the scenes from Ice Age 4 Continental Drift inside the dome. And then you come out and peek around the corner, and your favorite guy is there. He's Santa there? Claus. Yep. Now he is one of many. He is Santa Claus. There is one, and he, he is there. He and is there. Um, you can get your picture taken with him. He really is good. I mean, he's, he's, he's the best uh, Santa Claus yeah. ever because he's the only one. There's only one, and so he should be good at <laughs> now, what he does. That's, right? Okay, here's that's the segue to this. Well, right. So, um, so when you come get your picture taken with Santa, there are a number of packages that you can buy. They're, they start at twenty-one dollars, so they're really inexpensive. And if you buy the twenty-one dollar package or anything up from that, they go to fifty-five. You get a certificate for a free eight by eleven photo book from Snapfish. So you spend $21, you get a $25 Snapfish book in return. So that's a pretty good deal yeah. if you're looking for a bargain. And then um, with your photo for, that you get taken at the um, Ice Palace, you can go to snapfish.com and you can make, I just brought a sampling of the things that are available to make. And it's really fun because they're very personal. Mm -hmm. So you take your family photo or we're going to do two pet photos with Santa this year on um, December 2nd and 9th. From Ooh, 730 I to 930. Made the dog first. Yep, so dogs and cats, um, you can dress them up. People, you know, put antlers on them and put their red sweaters on and dress like their You're pets. You're still having fun oh with this. Oh my gosh, I love pet photos. is one of my favorite things we do. Um, so you can take your picture or your pet photo picture, and you can make a calendar. You can make um, the little picture that's standing up. We've got coffee mugs, Christmas cards, Christmas ornaments. Um, there's even charm bracelets and necklaces that you can make. Those are great gifts for parents, moms, grandparents. And this is a great example, then, of really the retail experience tying in with online, because some were, some were saying online would kill retail experience. It's kind of a combination of But you've of really both. kind of got the whole experience thing going. Well, and, and it's still, you know, what we really pride ourselves on is being a very family-friendly environment. And we want families to have just a wonderful holiday experience at MacArthur Center. And I think if you even look at what we have, the offerings through Snapfish, cool. it's just sort of an extension of what you can do with that family experience. So it kind of all ties back to that. So actually, Dad can go ice skating while family shops. Um, dads need to shop too. Yeah, I know it. Okay, dads I have, need presents. That's, it. that's what my wife keeps saying. <laughs> okay, I have one more question for sure. you. Sure. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Oh my gosh. Let me get through the holiday first. <laughs> well, happy holiday to you. And, it, and you're right. It's really building family, family culture, family. Uh, Just family holiday holiday. traditions. That's yeah. what we're all about. And some good shopping too. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks, happy Bob. holidays. Thank you. You too. When we come back, we're going to be talking only on Norfolk Perspectives. We go from shopping to what you don't put down the drain. Stay tuned. The first day stepping on the court, I couldn't keep up. That motivated me to step up my game. When I reach a goal, I set a new one the next day. And my next goal is to go to college. Mastering the court takes persistence. 
so does getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Well, you've had a long shopping day to getting ready for the holidays. You come home, you prepare that wonderful meal, and then what? And I got Brian Wilson, who's the environmental specialist. The f I like this. You're the fog program manager. Yes. Now, when we talk about fog, we're not talking about that stuff in the air. We are talking about? Fat, oil, and grease. And you're going to talk about how we're going to manage that. It's a big problem in our sewer system, and uh, we're leading an effort to... Uh, educate people on keeping bad things out of the sewer system. All right, and, uh, and Deidre Harmon? Okay. Now, I'm gonna put you on the spot because you're the public relations person, but you're also a mom in a growing family. Yes. So this time of year, you're making some adjustments too because that shopping style has changed a little bit. That's right, gotta shop for the little ones now. Going to see the Santa Claus at the yes. mall means something totally different. Yes. And then how you deal in the kitchen is different too, right? Exactly. Yes, try to keep a sink strainer in the sink to catch food scraps and throw it in the trash, and that helps keep our drains nice and clear. Okay, I got to ask you, because I don't do a whole lot of cooking anymore because we're not at the stage of life you're at. So what can my little bit of bacon grease on a Sunday, uh, Sunday morning do to the system that screwed all up? As it goes down the system, it cools, and as it cools, it hardens. If you pour it in a, in a can, which you can use a funnel to catch it. That's right, because getting that... Into a can. And if you let it set, you'll notice that it turns hard. Well, right. it's going to do that in the pipes, too. Yeah, but, but it's uh, just a little bit. Put a cover on it. But a little bit grows and grows and grows over time. And uh, soon, before you know it, you're calling a plumber in to uh, do some major work on your plumbing. Okay, I got, I got the tools. I got a garbage disposal and I got hot water. So if I run into the garbage disposal and hot water, it's got to take care of it, right? It might send it a little bit further down the line, but it's eventually going to be a problem for someone. And probably you. Never you never put grease down the <laughs> drain. You never did that? I have. Oh, okay. But since I've been working in this position and realized how big of a problem it is, um, it's really a bad for the drains. Um, Okay, now that was the obvious one. The bacon grease, that's easy. I caught yeah. onto that one a long, long time ago. <laughs> but there are some things, okay, like if I got leftover salad on my plate and I got ranch dressing in it, that can go down to my garbage disposal, can it? No. Nope. Oh. Almost all your food has some oil or grease in it. Yeah. So you want to keep it all out of the drain as much as possible. Garbage disposals really are not a good uh, implement to use. I've stopped using mine, and uh, I use a strainer instead to catch all the food scraps, and all the grease goes into the garbage. I, w I do cleanup after the meal, so I scrape the plates with a scraper, or I use a utensil that I used for eating, and then I wipe them with a napkin. Everything goes in the trash. And then what little residue is left on the plate does wind up going down the drain, but it's a lot less than it used to be. Did and I've had no problems. Help me here. <laughs> Dishwasher. How about the dishwasher? What's that do to you then? Well, we'd still rather um, whether you wipe a plate before putting it in the dishwasher so that it, the grease still doesn't go down the drain. Even in the dishwasher, the dishwasher can catch the grease and it can still clog up the pipes. So things like cake batter, um, butter. Now wait like a minute. That. Cake yeah, we, batter? Yes, is just... cake batter. Yes, because of the oil that is in the uh, cake batter and it, it, it can collect in the pipes. Yes. Yes. Because I know I've tried to make some cakes before and they've gotten all runny and it looked like they never would firm up. But they, but again, once they get into the ground. Okay, yeah. let's talk about system versus individual then. Mm -hmm. um, I know I was, I was confessing before the show that I actually had my garbage disposal back up and I was preparing Thanksgiving dinner and it wasn't cheap. Because that was on me because it was right there in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. When does it get on... When does it cause a problem for the community? In other words, the city has to take care of it. In your uh, higher density areas is, is a problem. And um, also, the restaurants do create a lot of grease. But they have uh, additional equipment to keep, to remove the grease mm -hmm. from the stream as it goes down into the sewer. Um, and part of our program is to educate the restaurants and to make sure they have the proper equipment in place and that they're maintaining it properly. Uh, the city council recently passed uh, an updated ordinance so that we can have um, 
more of an effect on the restaurants that uh, are contributing to the grease problem. And they're the ones that need to have the, uh, the grease traps and things like that. I mean, exactly. those are things that are going to be inspected. And that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But then when you, when you pile on 90,000 households, mm -hmm. that's where my little bit of grease or my little slab of butter that can make a difference. It all adds up. Yes. And the winter time is really the worst because the, it's colder and it, it uh, cools quicker and it solidifies quicker. And uh, it's just more of a problem in the winter time than it is in the summer months. Okay. Now, I've seen those, uh, well, in fact, actually, you've been on the show before. We've had that big pipe, and I mean, yeah. it really can get nasty, because a lot of those pipes have been around for a long, long time, too. Yes. It can build up, and our, our wastewater crews will have to come out and clear the line, which is definitely a How messy job. How do you do job. that? <laughs> they have special tools and equipment that they use to get into the pipes and clear the line. It takes them a little while, but they do a great job at it, And but we've prefer to, to try and prevent it, like Brian said, with the program and educating folks about what they can do to keep it out of the pipes. Well, is there a place where somebody can go to find out either more or have a speak, like if they have a group, can you, will somebody come out and speak with them? Yes. We have a new website, www.norfolk.gov forward slash fog, F-O-G, um, where there's more information both for the general public and for the food service establishments. Um, okay. I noticed that and publications seem to be really popping up on this too. AskHRGreen.org is um, part of uh, HRPDC, Hampton Roads Planning District Commission, and uh, they have been helping get the word out on a lot of green tips, and one of those tips is uh, Fat Oil and Grease Program. Um, this, this was in the newspaper back in April, but the, the information there is timeless, um, and uh, we have several copies. And we have some other literature, too, that uh, I've distributed at different uh, events that I go to. Okay community events. Laying, laying a uh, good conscience on everybody at this holiday time. Yes. Well, thank you for doing that because what's good for the, for the individual and the family ultimately can be good for the community and vice versa. So it is important that we look out for the entire community by doing something simple as, you want to wipe that plate down? I love the sure. way you do that. <laughs> we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you. Thank you.